I already have one war blaming cannon, but why settle for one when I could have two? And although the kid's already super dope, I wanted to unlock my inner warlock engineer and see if I could scrap one together on my own. Let's check it out. To begin, I'm gonna take some wheels from a screaming bell kit I never glued on. I'm gonna be making molds out of these using what's known as blue stuff. However, the ones I got come in lots of nice colors besides blue. It's basically a reusable molding product. Here's the package mine came in. I got it off Amazon. This one goes by a different name since it's from Japan. I'll try to put it in the description, but it's essentially blue stuff. I roughly estimate how large a piece I need by placing it next to the wheel and cut it to size. I found a container I wouldn't mind leaching chemicals into and plopped it in. Then I heated up some water to somewhere between 180 and 190 degrees Fahrenheit and covered it. I waited until it was soft and malleable, prodding it with my X-Acto knife to check. Once mushy, I carefully took it out and quickly pressed it down onto my wheel. I did this on something similar to wax paper so I could easily peel it off once cooled. I smushed it down trying to make sure I didn't get too thin along the edges, but also was able to capture all the details, making note to get it tight along the sides also. Once cooled down, we've got this super cool little mold to use with a pretty impressive amount of detail. I repeat this so I have two and begin to fill it with Milliput. Milliput is a two-part epoxy resin, but the more well-known green stuff would work too. I pinch off equal size globs of each part and knead them together thoroughly. Once I have a consistent mix, I just press it into my mold. While it's still workable, I take a rod of styrene that I want to use as an axle and press it into the center. This is just a rod of plastic. You can pick them up at most hobby or craft stores, but any other cylinder you find will work also. After this, I place a milliput side down on my paper to cure. One thing I learned while doing this is to add a little bit of milliput into the mold at a time to make sure you get it into all the nooks and crannies. You'll see when it hardens that I didn't capture the deepest parts of the mold all the way, but I think it totally works for what we're going for. I repeat this until I have six suitably scaven wheels to use. Also, I'm using these, but any wheel-like object will do. Skaven war engines are pretty much a cobbled together heap of wood planks, stone, and metal, so you have a bit of wiggle room. From this part forward, we're gonna be using a lot of really simple building materials, such as matchsticks and leftover sprue. To build out the frame, we're gonna be using these long matchsticks. I'm approximately cutting them to the same length as my pre-existing warp lightning cannon, using the grid on my paper to measure what I imagine is three and a half inches. I cut eight to roughly the same size, marking them first with my X-Acto knife and then using my clippers. I also use my files to take care of any of the nasty splintering left over from my clippers. I then dry fit them together to get a layout I like, making sure that the back edge are all square and lined up. I think the jaggedness is nice for the front and gives it a Skaven-like look. It's also important to note that all sides are not equal and only two have this nice wood grain to them, so I make sure those are facing up. I glue these together with tacky glue and leave them to dry. Once set, I also measure out a bit of matchstick that will stretch the width of the frame and glue it towards the front. This gives it a little extra touch to make it look like it was actually crafted together. To create fake nails, I first drill a hole corresponding with each board underneath. Then I glue in a bit of thin styrene rod and clip it to the appropriate size. With that, the main frame is complete. For the main structure that houses the cannon, I want to build a sort of castle tower, and to do so, I'll be making bricks out of sprue. To prepare the lengths of sprue, I cut and file off all the nubs, and then cut back all the corners on the wider parts. I cut them into bricks roughly as long as the width of two matchsticks. I figured this would help keep things orderly, but it quickly falls apart. 
Nevertheless, I lay them out and use super glue to adhere them along the wood, creating a rough square with three sides. Once I have my first row complete, I switch over to plastic glue and start laying more brick. With this second row, I stagger my pattern so that the bricks are placed over the meeting point of the two below, and we don't have any directly on top of one another, betraying the look. I continue this until I achieve a height I was happy with. I also left gaps in the side walls to act as windows, cutting my bricks in half when I needed to. I also left the edges with a ragged edge. I think this leans into the Skaven aesthetic, but you could just as easily clip all these off. I create a platform in the same manner as the wooden frame. However, upon dry fitting, I realized this would be a quite a slope due to the imperfect nature of my building materials. To help fix this, I cut a bit of matchstick in half lengthwise. This helped to fill the gap and also gave it a little more style that I was happy with. Once I was at this stage, I also lightly sanded the facades where a bit of the glue had accumulated. Now that we have the main structure, it's time to put those wheels on. First though, we have to do something about their backs. Using only a one-sided mold gives them an ugly finish. While this could just be sanded down, I thought it would be nice to add some detailing. After some cleaning, I created a wood texture with some sheet styrene, which you'll also commonly hear referred to as plastic card. First, I cut small strips to use as little planks and glued them to the back, leaving a gap for the axle. I also sand down any fingerprints poking out that were still visible. Another method I used was to first trace the wheels and then cut out a circle from the plastic card. I used short, straight lines to cut this out since I knew I wouldn't be able to cut a perfect circle and it would help with the wooden aesthetic. I then used my X-Acto to carve lines resembling wooden planks. To add to the effect, I took my flat file and scraped it along in one direction, which added a bit of wood grain texture and helped to roughen up the edges a bit. A hole was drilled in the center and these were glued on. I couldn't decide which version I liked better, so I decided to make three of each and alternate, which seemed very Skaven-esque to me. But what do you think? Which one would you have gone with? To make room for the axles, I first placed the wheels along the frame to make sure the spacing was correct and marked their center points. I then used a rounded file to sand out grooves for the axle to sit in. I had to do a couple adjustments, but once done, I cut three lengths of plastic rod and glued them in place. I overshot the length a bit so I would have some clearance and be able to adjust to get all the wheels to fit. After a lot of dry fitting to get the best configuration, I glued them in place. Some things I kept in mind were to alternate which wheels I used depending on the backing, and then the orientation of the wood grain on the front side so they didn't all look the same. For the cannon part of the warp lightning cannon, I was originally going to go with a leftover toilet paper roller, but seeing in situation it looked a little plain. I also tried this leftover super glue bottle, which was better, but what really did the trick was removing the cap and using the nozzle. I really liked the threads, they remind me of a Tesla coil, which I thought was super fitting. I wanted to lean into this and wrap some wire around it so it wasn't so easily recognizable. I drilled a hole to anchor in some wire and then began wrapping it around, working it into the threads. Once I was happy, I secured it with a bit of super glue. I want to cut the overall cannon at an angle so I can glue it in place. The only problem is that there's all this hardened super glue at the bottom I need to get out. I drill in some holes in the bottom corners and use these to get my clippers in there and start removing the bottom of the plastic. From here I can unscrew the cap and push out the cured super glue through the new opening I've made. Once it's cleared I can check the cannon against the structure and mark off the angle and make a cut line. I carefully use my X-Acto to remove the unwanted plastic finishing the job with my clippers since there was a bit of tension and I didn't want my blade to slip. To 
To really help break up the silhouette of the super glue bottle, I cut out strips and squares of sheet styrene to give it a more ramshackle look. At first I tried to secure these with plastic glue, but realized super glue was the way to go. I used files to help bend them into shape and also to roughen up the surfaces to give the glue something to grip onto. Once I had these placed, I used rubber bands to hold them until the glue was fully cured. Once all these bits are fully dry, it's time to create some rivets. These are little bits of plastic that help make these sheets of metal look like they're actually bolted on. To create them, I took a thin styrene rod and used plastic glue to adhere it to the perimeter of the sheets. Once tacky, I clipped it to size. Another method is to just use your X-Acto to cut the rod up and then place these on with a bit of glue. It's kind of a tedious task, but it really helps with the realism and pulls it all together. To finish up the tower and give it a more castle feel, I add more sprue bricks. Once these are stacked two rows high, I then focus on the corners to help create something that looks like a castle battlement. Since there's gaps in the tower walls and it could overall use some grit, I smear some Vallejo earth texture into the unintended gaps between the bricks and wipe away the excess. While doing this, I also dab some onto the cannon to grime it up a bit and to help to further move the shape away from a super glue bottle. As a final detail, I'm going to use this little scaven bit that I've been hanging onto as a gargoyle of sorts. I like this inclusion of an actual Warhammer bit since it helps to give it some scale and place it in that world. With that, we're all finished. I really enjoyed building this and I'm super stoked to field it in a game. With all the building materials being super common and the overall process pretty approachable, I'm hoping that this also inspired the inner Warlock engineer in all of you and perhaps you'll want to make your own Skaven War Machines. Thanks so much for watching. I'd also super appreciate you subscribing to my channel if you feel so inclined. Thanks.